How do you make one of the most fun and interesting series into a shadow of its former self? The early 1970s was a pivotal time for tokusatsu in Japan, as it marked the birth of the legendary Kamen Rider series, which would go on to spawn numerous sequels and become a cultural icon of Japan, a superhero who fought against evil organizations to protect the innocent. The series was an instant hit, and it spawned a new wave of tokusatsu shows that featured similar themes and concepts, but a shadow hanged over the original Kamen Rider, the goofy side of Kamen Rider, which was taken too far, and all the tension was gone. That leaves you with... Common Rider V3, a show you started watching with friends because you thought it was going to be fun. Well, well, well. It's time we talk about the infamous Kamen Rider V3. This Japanese tokusatsu television series hit the screens in 1973, following in the footsteps of its predecessor, the original Kamen Rider. This series revolves around Shiro Kazumi, who becomes the badass Kamen Rider V3 to seek revenge on his family and battle against the villainous Destron organization. However, some fans have criticized V3 for its weak storyline, mainly me. V3 picks up a few weeks shortly after the destruction of Gel Shocker, where Shiro is destroyed by Destron. Luckily, he's saved by the two original Kamen Riders, who turn him into Kamen Rider V3, who has 26 secret powers, and it's a plot point that goes nowhere. To write out the original Kamen Riders, they just nuke them. Ba-booey. Ba-booey. Ba-boom. So it's V3's job to protect Japan from the evils of Destron in their Hitler Youth program. This show features a variety of monsters that Kamen Rider V3 battles against, each with its unique design. Every week, a new strange monster by the devilish Destron is made that threatens to destroy Japan every week. Similar to the original Kamen Rider, but leaving a lot of the monsters to your imagination, these are a bit more goofier than your normal Kamen Rider monsters. Not that the Kamen Rider monsters were that serious, but these are like taken to the extreme. Most of them tend to be hybrids between animals and tools, like a pickaxe and an iguana. While the original Kamen Rider, you had these charming monsters, here it's taken to such extremes it's just too goofy to take seriously. I desire my children's shows to be serious! For most of the main show, the main villain is this guy in knight armor with the Destron symbol on it. Compare that to the sci-fi cyborgs and the strange animals, it's a little bit jarring to have a knight here. Another enemy is a frog in a boiler. These enemies are, well, interesting. They feel a bit of a letdown from the original monsters. I miss the stupid Wolfman thing. In many ways, V3 feels like the original Kamen Rider, but without Hongo and Hayato to carry on the show emotionally. At least we still have Tachibana to be the guidance for V3, and he continues to have the heart of the original show. Not Shiro, though. He, he literally has no character. He's just like, I, I must take revenge on my family who died. Which I guess makes sense, but, you know. I just wish he had, like, dreams and aspirations outside of the normal... I'm here to fight Kamen Rider. Masaru Igami was the lead writer of both the original and V3 and many, many other Showa-era Kamen Rider shows. And apparently, his entire family is destined to write for the mystical Kamen Rider. His son wrote several shows in the Heisei era, like Decade, Zio, Ryuki, and far too many to name in this short video. And his granddaughter went on to write a Decades novel. All these writers are for this legendary franchise. He's done amazing work, just, just not here. <laughs> One of the main villains, Dr. G, or also pronounced as Dr. Gay, as he says it, that, that's all. I, I just want you to know it's a funny name. I, <laughs> gay. <laughs> I'm gay. Oh yeah, they revive all the old journals because, you know, they need some filler. V3 is a little repetitive over its 52 episode run, making you ask yourself why. Why am I still here watching the show when I'm bored out of my mind, falling asleep at my seams in my bed? Then you remember... You promised your friends that you would watch every Kamen Rider series with them, and you're totally judging that your decision for that. But then it happens. The show gets stakes. You become invested in the drama. I mean, it only takes 40 episodes, but I mean, what changed? Rider Man. This stupid, goofy fucking character who's got the worst design ever made. I love him. He's funny. He's cool. He makes me happy. It doesn't make sense. Rider Man is an ex-Destron scientist who was raised by the Destron leader and was manipulated to be a servant of evil. AKA Rider Man is slowly convinced by V3 that the evils and terrors of Destron is more than just his arch nemesis, Martial Armor, the Crab Man. V3 and Rider Man are at each other's throats for the entire show, but slowly they become to accept each other as friends and allies. At the end, 
He begs Destron the leader for peace. He doesn't want to end his father's life. But he knows that Destron won't accept peace. And so he does the one thing he knows he can do. <laughs> He sacrificed himself to save Japan and thwart Destron for one last time. And this, this actually was emotional. I cried. This comes out of nowhere for this entire plot. I don't know what changed in its last breath, but V3 became an amazing show out of nowhere. Well, I don't like V3 that much. The last 10 episodes are amazing. And if you plan on watching V3, just watch the first two episodes and then just watch the last 10. You'll have a better time. Like the original Conrad, there's a lot of weird spin-offs in movies. The 1970s was a strange time, at least that's what the media I see tells me. You had six Beetlemen riding around on bikes, beating up monsters. You had Spider-Man with a giant robot being the Emissary of Hell. And then that Emissary of Hell meets that Beetleman, kind of. Here's some photos from this promotion where the two fought together in a strange photo comic book from the 1970s. While there's no episode tying them together, it does break my heart that this is probably not canon because I can't imagine Marvel would want this to be canon to have a weird beetle man being canon, but in my heart of hearts, it's canon to me. I want Spider-Man and Comrade to be friends so they can kick someone together. V3 has two movies. One is an episode that was aired in theaters, so not really a movie, and the other one was a high-budget 20-minute movie that was just the plot of another Kamen Rider movie. V3 is just worse Kamen Rider. If you enjoyed my video, like and subscribe, it helps. Also watch this video about a good Kamen Rider series. Bye!